Luke and online here via Zoom with my special guest of the week. Uh, Miss Special Guest, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi guys, I'm Silla Ray. Hi um, Silla Ray. Um, yes, how are you? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? How are you? How's your lockdown? How's life as we no, slightly uh, come out? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh it's it's been a bit of a weird one. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Like I've tried to stay busy, like be active, because mm -hmm. I just, I just cannot. I do all this, all of this staying indoors and stuff is not, <laughs> it's not really me. But hey ho. Did do. you, did you find that you were indoors a lot? Because I, if I'm being honest, I was hardly indoors. Like, I couldn't do it, so I was out every day. Really? What were you doing? Um, <laughs> if it, it depends if Boris is listening or not. If Boris is not listening, then. <laughs> Then I was um, as, let's put it this way, I was as isolated as the next person wanted to be. Let's put it that way, so. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, because I have a son yeah. and he's, you know, three, he's at that stage where he, like, staying in one place is not, isn't, yeah, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. So obviously I'll just go out and stuff and just do whatever, just to get a bit of fresh air. Yeah. Just kind of go to family. Yeah, I'll stay, yeah. stay at my mom's house because I got my house. So I'm just yeah. like, yeah, I don't live at my house. I live at my mom's house. Yeah, fair, like, yeah, yeah. Did you at any point actually talking about, it, did you ever at any point get stopped by police? To say, where are you going? D no, but I was close because you know what? Um, basically um, in Barnet, because that's where, that's where I live. Mm -hmm. um, they were like offering like, people with young kids like food boxes and stuff okay um, and so then um I didn't really need it but I was like you know what it's free and you know they'll pop in like cans and stuff and fruits and just meals and whatever whatever else I thought you know what just get it it's like I feel like free free food in it so um literally they had like a schedule where they'll come every week but they, they, they wouldn't give you a day yeah. They'll just be like, yeah, we're going to come like during the week, during some time. Right. And because I was back and forth, you know, between my mom's house and my house, because I just didn't want to stay like where I was like 24 seven. I remember the, the guy who came to deliver it missed me like twice, two or three yeah. times. Mm -hmm. And then um, the third time he missed me, he was like, do you even live at your house? <laughs> He's like, do you even live at your house? Like, well, yeah. why are you never in? He's like, hmm, are you breaking the, the, the mm. lockdown rules? Da, 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 da. Yeah. And I was like, listen, first of all, mind your business. Yeah, of course. And second, <laughs> and second of all, like, I have a, a young child, so I'm not going to be at home 24-7. Like, mm. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's nearly close. So that's, not as bad as, that, that's not as bad as mine. When I got stopped, I actually got stopped by police and got a fine for being out. But admittedly, wow. admittedly I was in Brighton. Right, and they said there's there's no reason why you, I said I just popped out for my hour. This is listen, it's an hour's drive. Like, so that's, you're more than an hour. Anyway, we had a big back and forth. I got a fine, which I didn't pay, but yeah, they were hot on it. So I just wondered. I don't know what I wonder really? if anyone else got fines. I know I definitely. That's do. really weird. I I don't know anyone else that's because I just don't see how they just stop. Did they stop you on road? Like just like. Oh, the like, story. The boring story is that literally I was on the, the, the Brighton beach, and they got one of these these, yeah. these fake policemen. You know the like, blue badge police people. So this woman's walking right. past saying, oh, get off the beach, get off the beach. And so I said, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I'm lying down on this beach. And she said, I said, get off the beach. I said, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and she's walking around. And she goes, right, I told you twice, you're going to get a fine. So when she said that, I said, no, oh, let me just get up. So I started walking now. And she started following right. me. So I said, what are you following me for? I said, you walk past pure people on the beach. If you're trying to clear, if your job to clear the beach, then you're not doing your yeah. job. She's following me, so I walk up to the main road. She follows me up to the main road. I said, you've passed bare people on the stairs. She's following me. I turn right, walk in that direction down right, and she's following me. I turn back on myself, walk back to where I came from. She follows me, follows me. And then some um, a police van drives past. So it's waving down the police van, waving down the police van. And then they, they, all of them get out, whatever, and they start doing all the nonsense. Effectively, they, I told them I'm not going to pay the fine anyway, but they gave me the fine. They didn't pay it, so... But yeah, yeah, that's really unfair because you could have been walking back indoors. Uh, yeah, but I live in London and I was in Brighton, so I guess so. Oh, true, yeah, yeah. So mm. I didn't really have much of a leg to stand on. So, my argument was <laughs> I came down for some fresh air. So, I said, Why can't right. you get fresh air in London? I said, Because it's London, there's no fresh air in London. I've got asthma, you know, Literally. So, <laughs> it's like, it was the most stupid argument, but it is like it's, 
<laughs> anyway, enough of that boringness. Um, um, tell people about yourself. Let's let's know more about you because I haven't actually had a chance to speak to you before. I've just realised this now. We've never actually spoken. Yeah. Before. So we've been playing your music for a while. Well. Huh? Yeah. All these years as well. All these, right? So, uh, yeah. playing your music. I know you had an interview with um, who was it? Uh, Flyboy. Yes. I made a fucking yeah. Flyboy. So you've definitely been interviewed on the station before, but not with me. So. But for mm-hmm. people that aren't really aware, give us a brief summary of who Silla is. I know you almost touched on it, but where you come yeah. from, how you got started, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm a UK R&B singer-songwriter. Mm-hmm. I started when I was around 14. I've been doing it professionally for about seven years. Mm-hmm. Um, so I first got discovered by Da Vinci, who's a grand producer. Um, you know, he did all the greats, the Wiley, the Skeptors, and all of those guys. Um, and he picked me up from MySpace, which is where I started posting all my songs and, and stuff like Ooh, that. you old girl, you old girl. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> So from that point, it was just kind of like he he mentored me for a little bit with his manager. His manager is a really um, notable songwriting manager. So they kind of took me under their wing for a bit, kind of teaching me the ropes of being in the studio, singing, songwriting, how to record your voice, how to just do all the extra technical things. So that's kind of where I just put my foot in first. Um, and then from there, the doors just kind of open. I guess it's, it's like a ripple effect when you meet one person mm-hmm. and they introduce you to somebody else and, and so forth. Because I've had a few managers <laughs> back then. Um, and, <laughs> and then, yeah, I just kind of stayed independent. I had a few different situations, but I stayed independent um, and then released my first EP in 2014. Okay. Um, and then released Masterpiece, which was a single I had off of it, which was kind of like the first time I, I guess things kind of popped off properly, you know, having a premiere with Mobile Awards and plays from BBC One Extra and, and all of that. Um, and then, yeah, I took a little bit of a break because I had my son. Um, so that was the, the big hiatus. Um, and then, yeah, I pre- pretty much had plans to come back properly. <laughs> Not obviously expecting the whole COVID situation coming down. Um, so yeah, in the middle of that, that's when I just started releasing again. But I guess kind of in a bad situation, it was kind of like the best thing for me mm-hmm. because everything just started happening. Um, I was lucky enough to get uh, funding from Arts England National Lottery. Okay. So they've been funding this this project that I'm putting out in about... How much did you get? How much, how, how much did you get? How much did you get? Oh, am I allowed to disclose the amount? Yeah, 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 of course. It's me and you, just between me and you. <laughs> and, and anyone else who might be listening. Okay, okay well, yeah, uh, 10K. <laughs> Is it? Whoa! Ba, 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 ba. Really? I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. Wow, <laughs> big money. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was crazy. And I, I to, but it, I planned it so that mm. I could get it. I I just said to myself, let me start off by being active again. Because obviously I took a bit of time out. So mm. that meant kind of, you know, putting out new releases, mm-hmm. um, doing the PR ourselves mm-hmm. initially, you know, just just shooting the videos, like basically doing the groundwork first to, mm-hmm. to show and prove that, you know, you've got what it takes to be able to handle that amount of money mm-hmm. and put it into whatever you're so when, yeah. you, when that money came through, imagine it wasn't a check, you just sent it straight through to your bank. So one morning you woke up, your bank was just loaded. Okay, cool. How many pairs of shoes did you buy? Oh, do you know what, yeah? I Listen, okay. Because you need it for the video, right? Yes, yes and no. So like, basically, first of all, it's a really long process and it's, not, it's really not easy to just kind of like, apply and then yeah congratulations it's a really long process like really long um and then as soon as they put it in basically they have the plan before I'm even given it given the money that makes sense they have the plan that you sent to them yeah so they they pre-approve it first so say for instance I have like a schedule and it will have like September October November December within those months I've got all of the things that I'm going to be doing and spending the money on so okay. studio all september mm. 30 hours equals this amount so they already know what's mm. being spent before mm. it's being spent so but do does anyone check up on you and your schedule not really no, I, you, mm, but then but then in the end you know when you do the final project evaluation and stuff they kind mm. of you know you, get, you do a report 
mm-hmm. and you kind of you know give them proof and like a spread I don't know like a spreadsheet with everything you spent in the expenditure etc cetera, etc cetera. I mean they are strict in the sense where it's like okay well if you don't spend the full 10k and you've got a little bit of money left over we want that money back really <laughs> wow yeah but I knew like mm-mm, like music costs too much I was gonna go over literally I was gonna end up basically adding on to it anyway so so have you spent yeah. the 10k already um I would say about 80 percent because mm-hmm. we've got the <laughs> because we've got the um project coming up and obviously we haven't paid for the the, you know the things that are coming up with the project itself mm-hmm. so the the rest of the percentage is kind of still there so we're kind of just preparing I mean it's little things it's videos you pay mm-hmm. the video directors mm-hmm. you pay the PR people if you're going to hire you pay the recording you pay mm-hmm. the artists mm-hmm. who are featured you pay the producers you yeah. pay everyone yeah you know? yeah everyone needs to get paid yeah yeah so it, in hindsight 10k is not really a lot yeah no it goes far we can imagine Okay. Yeah. All right. So before we went into it, you actually said uh, when you were first met up with Da Vinci, and just after that, you had a few situations. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are those situations? Um. You know what? It's it's just a lot of it came down to the fact that I was really young mm-hmm. at the time. So you can imagine being between fourteen, maybe to nineteen or twenty that you know you're at a stage where you're still figuring you're figuring out what it is that you want to do how you want to you know go about your career the the type of music you want to make etc cetera, etc cetera. and I felt like you know people would come on board and be like okay I want to manage you or an A&R from a record label would come on board and be like okay can we do, do you want to try a few taster sessions and stuff like that and work with some producers to kind of see where things go and I felt like there was one manager in particular at first who I just I just didn't like the direction in as far as like branding wise so like the look the presentation Mm -hmm. that they wanted to take me through and I think you just know you got a gut feeling when you know a situation's not really right for you do you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying um and then leading on from that, I had another um, manager, but again, he just strictly wanted me for songwriting. He's like, yeah, this thing is cool, yeah, but <laughs> I think you'll be better as a, as a songwriter. And R&B doesn't really pop. So, you know, you need to take the songwriting route and stuff like that. And he, he was even really close to getting a, um, a publishing deal with Sony. And I was just like... Mm. I just yeah I just would you not as, as, as a way in though as like, like for example Nia started off as a songwriter so as mm-hmm. a way in would you not be interested in doing that yes and no I think even though that looks like the easiest way to kind of get in because you know you're, you, you're pretty much establishing yourself amongst people who would help you get in yeah. um realistically if you if you I don't know if you equal up all the songwriters right now who are trying to make it, it's like one very far and few in between, basically. Mm-hmm, yeah. And it's like it's it's just off chance, it's off luck, you know what I'm saying? And I guess you don't want to be put in a when you know you don't want to be put into a situation, remember it's contractual as well. So it's not like okay, I'd have to sign this, and that means absolutely no artist stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So and then on, on top of that, it's like, okay, what's the term gonna be? What for five, six years? So <laughs> you just think about it. think about the bigger picture, you know. And I was just like, mm, yeah. If they gave me leeway to be able to do both, yeah. then great. But yeah. if I'm just gonna be tied down for the sake of like, just and it's really hard being a songwriter because at one stage I was just literally they would just put me in sessions with producers up and down, like established to up and coming. And I just remember just going into every session, just like. Oh, like it started feeling like a job literally. but it's regular money though isn't it so there is that to it yeah 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 yeah, for sure for sure so but, there are there yeah. are positives but just not maybe the positives that you're after yes basically yeah and I was young as well I was just like no I want to do my artist stuff like I'll just yeah. I'll write a bit or if I have songs that I've written then go cool, take it but like yeah so yeah and, it, and, it, and this is before you had your child 
Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What did you have, a boy yeah. or a girl? A boy. A little boy. Yeah. Um, three yeah. years old, you said, right? Yeah. So yeah. what's it like being um, a mummy in music with a young child? You know, it's so interesting because um, every time I do press or every time like I get interviews and stuff like that, that's the first thing like people want to know all the time. Really? Which is mm. yeah, which is I, I mean I don't mind it because it's 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 weird because um last year, just before I started releasing again, my manager was just like, Oh, you might you might want to take the angle of like, you know, letting people know that you're a mum and stuff like that, because I was really opposed to it. Mm. I was like, mm, I don't really want to But be- why? Yeah. Why why should it be a focus point? Um, because I just felt like I didn't want to make that my story. No, I was asking why it should it be your story. That's exactly what I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. I I just felt like I just didn't I didn't want I didn't want to be oh the, that's the girl that says she's a mom. Yeah. I did at first I didn't want that narrating. I just mm. kind of wanted the focus to just be on the music. Mm. Um and he kept trying to say, no, 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 just incorporate it. Just just put a little bit, you don't have to do, you don't have to go all the way into detail, but just incorporate it and stuff like that. And since I started to do that, it's just like the vocal point in every interview. And really? I get, yeah, the specific question is always about motherhood and stuff. Mm. So yeah, to answer your question, it's 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 difficult. It's it's not easy because um I'm not with the child's father <laughs> so, <laughs> so for me it's kind of like okay well there's a lot of like scheduling and balancing that I have to do just just for the sake of, of that and um I think it, it's, it's hard to find the balance because it's like I have to switch off but with music it's just it's, it's all it's just I feel like it's an industry that's just bizarre in a sense where there's no start or finish time Mm -hmm. right you could have a meeting like late in the evening or early in the morning or whatever time so it's just kind of like the the timing of everything is kind of all over the place and it's like I've had to really kind of just be um focused in a sense where it's like I have to put a schedule together it's like okay cool wake up at this time if I need to complete this for an hour complete it okay drop them at nursery all right come back okay do this now and then run all the press releases and then come back and it's just like it's a lot yeah. But for the average person who doesn't have to do that, yeah. like have that extra responsibility, it's, it's difficult. So yeah, so other as I want to say, I can just sit down, chill out, just relax, just watch my TV, whereas you running around doing whatever you got to do. But hey, that's what you got to do to make right. it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I mean, today, because obviously today I just, I just dropped a, a new song, mm-hmm. and um, my son has gone in nursery today at one o'clock. Mm-hmm. and my manager's like okay make sure you get all the the really the um, make sure you just make sure everything's in place and whatnot and you've updated your socials and stuff like that and, da, 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 da. and obviously you want to do it like as early as possible so that people don't kind of land on something and there's nothing there type of thing or whatever mm-hmm. and I'm like having to get I, I get up at seven because of Rashan he gets up at seven and I'm like all right cool so I have to give him breakfast okay let me make sure he's quiet over there for an hour so I can make sure all these socials are updated really quickly then he starts coming and pulling my hair and trying to dash me to the floor and stuff so it's just you know and then I'm like oh shit, the, the time sorry language I'm like oh the time and then I have to like get up <laughs> I have to get up and like run and like drop him off and I'm like okay one o'clock now oh I haven't put this up oh this hasn't been sent out and it's just what is the hardest always, part for you like the, the, the managing um of, of your time being a mother a single mother and all the rest of it um making the music studio time socials what do you find like the hardest bit because I like I can't deal with all these socials the TikToks the Twitters the Instagram the Facebooks the this and that I ain't got time for all that and I, I, as an artist it would do my head in I would probably yeah. find that the hardest bit but what do you find the hardest part hmm, that's interesting because for me I would say the hardest part is the behind the scenes stuff and putting stuff together Mm -hmm. so for instance okay yeah I'll just use this song as as an example the song I put out today Mm -hmm. Open for Love featuring Tiffany Evans now Tiffany is based in the States in the US Mm -hmm. and obviously the producer who's actually my brother (laughs) he's on the on the track as well and I think it's the liaising back and forth because obviously if I do a mix on my yeah. on, on the record and then I've got to send that to her 
and then her people has got to sort out the mix and then they don't get something right in the mix mm. they, uh, it comes back to me then back to them again mm. and then and I have to wait the time and, delays as well and all that yeah <laughs> and then obviously like having to, to do all the agreements and the contractual stuff mm-hmm. um that's the hardest bit I think yeah yeah because I, I, you know, I actually really love doing the, 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 the bit outside of it, which is like the press and like putting music out and then just getting it out and just kind of speaking to people and just like really interacting. And I kind of actually enjoy that. I know artists, I know some artists who really hate that and yeah. they hate doing interviews. Yeah. They hate talking to people, period. Yeah. And I'm like, why? Yeah. Isn't that what you're meant to do? <laughs> and I'm just like to them, listen, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel like I have a choice. Cause you gotta remember, it could be like a drill artist or you know, one of those popular guys yeah. can just literally put out a song and that's it. Like they can probably do one a couple of little interviews and then that's it. When yeah. it's like you play R&B or just R&B in general, mm-hmm. it's always like, I feel like we have to hustle like they hustled back in the day. Like, why is that? Because I don't get it. Because, because I feel like we don't have enough. Um, we we don't have enough major R and B platforms that will just literally just. I don't know. It's just so much like we're not really taken as. We have to prove a lot, basically. Yeah. Really, you feel yeah, so? Definitely. Yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Because it's just always, it's like the, the old school way of having to like, like back in the day when an artist would put out a record, they literally get in a van, yeah, we are driving to X station, next mm-hmm. station, mm-hmm. this station, we are getting every interview, okay, well, it's talk midnight now, okay, we got Germany calling, mm-hmm. hello, like, mm-hmm. we got to do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the old school way of, like, yeah. promoting your, your stuff, as well as just, like, obviously right now with social media and stuff, but I feel like we just have a lot more to prove. Um, I, I don't see it that way, but I, I get what you're saying, but it's a question that I get asked. And it's something that I yeah. get asked all the time by, by other people, it's like, oh, there were no good R&B artists anyway in the UK. No. I hear that all the time. No. Right? But I hear that all the time. And obviously I know, because I, I will play and I'll hear, but a lot of people don't, so, so you don't get the exposure, because obviously I wouldn't be hearing that question if you were getting the exposure. But when you say about um, major R&B platforms, there aren't necessarily major R and sorry R and drill. They ain't necessarily yeah. drill major drill platforms. They're just platforms, i.e., your GRMs or your link ups. They are predominantly yeah, think, drill yeah. and hip hop, but they they you know your music would be welcomed. Yeah, but uh, you know what it is? It's because those those um, link ups and GRMs and stuff. Th- those platforms are made for that type of for those types of vibes, for those types of music. So naturally it's going to do well, the raps and the drills and stuff, because that's, they're made, that's, that's what it's there for, right? Primarily, obviously, they, obviously they do put up other styles of music, but primarily that's what they're there for, that type of music. Yeah. And the fan base is large yeah. in comparison to like, um, I don't want to point anyone out, but you know what I'm saying? In, compa- <laughs> in comparison to another R&B platform, mm-hmm. do you know what I'm saying? The fan base compared is like, Huge. Yeah. You can put a video up on Link Up or um, one of those um, channels and probably get what 15 to 20k. Whereas you do it on your own platform if you haven't really got a platform. Uh, and there's no other RB platform like a Link Up or a GRM. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get as much because they, they haven't got the, the major audience that they have. Mm-hmm. Um, but it begs to differ as well because, like you said, the person said there's no good RB artists. Mm-hmm. And this is why we have to do more work to get to show our faces and to get out there mm-hmm. because they really think that there's no good, there's there's barely any good R&B artists. And there's so many of us, and yeah. it's like we have to like do as much interviews, as much press, as much whatever, as much shows, whatever we can do to get our names out there because apparently we're not out here. <laughs> apparently, but <laughs> right. well, no, it's, it's something I hear all the time. I literally. Um, I even went to a meeting once with loads of R&B artists and they were saying the same thing and what they need to do to make it better and all the rest of it. They didn't do it, but, but yeah, no, I hear that quite often. So, so what do you think you need to do is uh, uh, just yourself, yourself, in your self-promotion. Do you have a plan in terms of make, promoting? Because obviously you're doing the press, like you're doing press with me and I know you've done press with other mm-hmm. people. I'm assuming you'll do some more in the coming weeks or months, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, yeah. But do you have a plan in terms of promoting yourself? Just say, right, this is what I'm going to do to promote this single and, and have it scheduled out 
to that when you're going mm -hmm. forward. Yeah. 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 So for every release that like, we all, I almost like have a have an aim for each release. Like every release has its different target on, and objectives and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So with Motives, what I put out last time, the objective for that was basically to to get more awareness mm -hmm. as far as me as an artist. The, the, the type of artist I am and just just everything as a whole um which is why we had so much press because I think we did we had our own in-house press and then we also had Liberty PR on board okay. for it um which is how miraculously MTV ended up picking up the song and whatnot and um stuff like that so it was all about brand awareness but this single for me I was kind of like, okay the focus is on streaming um but I don't just always niche everything because you still have to kind of do everything around it um so obviously with the, with this single there's there's plans of like you know a first player one extra which is sunday with bbc uh, with um dj ace um next week there's the represent interview so for me it's just always about doing as much as I can mm -hmm. and focusing on whatever it is. If it's a music video, okay, let's focus on making sure that the music video is put out everywhere and it has the, it gets the views that it can get um, and stuff like that. But the number one thing though, I think I've learned um, just off the back of, because I can compare it to now, from now, like back when I released Masterpiece, which was like 2017. And I just feel like I can't really compare it because it's just, it was a different time. Mm -hmm. So for me now, it's just kind of like what I've learned is consistency. Mm. I think that's the number one thing. I think it's for everyone, 100%. For everyone. Mm. Um, because, you know, it's, it, because it's, it's, it's really interesting, especially with like newer artists right now who put out stuff and they may do really well with the first single. You know, they may get so much press across various different outlets and gets a lot of radio play and stuff like that but none of that means nothing if you ain't got nothing to follow true yeah nothing true. and even the one that you do follow what's coming after that and what's coming after that so you need a long-term plan yes yeah and i figured for me it's really about consistency because um there's this thumb of rule that my manager used to say is like sometimes people don't become fans until the fourth release <laughs> that makes sense yeah, so yeah. you might put out one song today and they might look and see how hmm, okay second song comes out yeah like, okay well i know who they are okay cool it is Third very song true comes yeah. Out, like, yeah yeah right they, they'll be like okay hmm, okay look, I, I remember okay let me listen yeah. and then the, the fourth there's time, an enemy. sorry go on yeah go on Oh. Yeah, so yeah, fourth time they might become an actual fan because they've seen you enough and you've been consistent enough mm -hmm. to kind of stick in their mind. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah that's there's an element of that which is 100% true. And there's an element of they won't become a fan until they see that someone else will become a fan. There's a lot yes. of followers. So it's not okay. You yes. could do, you do the best you can do. You could release the best song of all time. And if no one, if, if someone, if, if they don't see enough people liking it, they won't like it. But as soon as they see you, there's a buzz around you, people follow the buzz rather than the talent. Absolutely. So you got to create a buzz. You need, you need to get on TikTok. Absolutely. Do a little TikTok of your song. That's what you need to do. Get a, have you got a dance for it? That's what you need to do. Get a dance for your song. You see what I'm saying? All of that, <laughs> it's, it's so true. It's yeah. really, really, really true because um, just even just judging from my own experience and stuff like that with with motives because we've picked up so much momentum with that mm -hmm. there was a lot of people that were paying a lot more attention than maybe before um and people do follow bus people do want really want to see like okay well you put out this record what's going on with it so what is it there is it here is, oh what you got that okay cool yeah and then they start becoming more convinced that you're a bit more of a solid guy yeah sure. so yeah, so this is, I think at the end of the day, it's all about consistency, 100%. I'm going to press play, because this is going out on radio. I'm going to press play on the um, on the song next, okay? So I just want you to tell me about the new song, Open For Love. Tell me about um, the song, what's it about, and how you, um, you know, what happened in, in terms of making this song before you released mm -hmm. it? What was the idea? Yeah, so Open For Love features um, Tiffany Evans. She's um, a US R&B artist. Um, you might have known her from back in the day, maybe Promise Ring with Sierra. <laughs> um, she had a song on site with Betty Wap. Um, she's an established artist in her own right. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was 
uh, recorded for the EP last September. Um, my brother, because he's part of the production on the EP, he sent me over that song and I was just like, mm, yeah, this sounds like a vibe. It's just kind of a bit different from what I've done. It's just more of like a R&B soulish type track. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I recorded it, I just said, yeah, this might be perfect for a feature. And I actually had one artist who was close to doing it. Who's that? A UK artist. Who's that? Say the name. <laughs> I'm spilling so much. <laughs> um, Shay Universe. Oh wow, well, okay. Um, mm-hmm. So she's very, very close to, to doing the track, but obviously that it didn't fall through. Mm-hmm. Um, so second in mind was was actually Tiffany. Um, but it wasn't a thing where it's just kind of like I was going to another artist and asking if they can do a collab because I'd already kind of known Tiffany from before. Okay. We already had that um, relationship rapport for years. Okay. So it was just kind of easy, easy and natural to, to go to her and be like, okay, I've got, I've got this song, can you be on it? And she's like, yeah, I love the song, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, it took her, um, it was a bit hard, like I said, because when you're liaising from the UK to the US, it's a bit difficult. And obviously they have their own set ways of doing things, mm-hmm. yeah. especially when it comes to the mixes and stuff like that. Um, and um, it took a couple of months, but we eventually got there. So the song in general is just all about kind of like being ready and open in a space where you're ready to receive love, whether that be, I don't know, romantic or just a platonic kind of love. It's just about being in a space where you've gotten rid of just negative energy and just past filled situations. And, and you're a bit of baggage. Yeah. And you've mm-hmm. kind of like moved into a space now where you're kind of healed. Mm-hmm. And you want to accept something new into your life, so that's okay. it's, so that's what it's about. So, yeah, I was, I love the song, and it's going to be on the up and coming EP. So, yeah. Will oh so, oh, so will there be a video? Number one. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Sorry, got to mention that. Yes, there will be a video. Obviously, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, she's in not it. in the video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, because of the situation. Mm-hmm. So, um, we've already shot the video and stuff like that. I'm in the middle of like still going back and forth with the video di- director in terms of like editing and stuff. So, there will be a video definitely. Cool. And the EP or the project, whatever it is, is going to be an EP album mixtape. What's going to be? Yeah, it's going to be an EP. Okay. The EP is called Recon- Reconnected. Mm-hmm. And it's going to come out, I'm hoping, because the EP is already done, the artwork, mm-hmm. everything, the name, everything is done. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of just obviously having the plan in place for um, promotion. So Are we I'm having hoping, an EP launch party? I'll, do you know what? It's, it's, it's in my mind, but mm-hmm. because I don't... I the just answer don't we want to hear anything. is yes. That's what we want to hear. <laughs> yes. it's simple. simple. It's in my mind. I've been thinking about it because obviously we still got a bit of the, the finance there. Yeah. And I just thought to myself, okay, we've done the press rounds, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of people are aware. Um, but wouldn't it be nice to be in person, you know? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. actually sit and vibe and listen and take away physical copies and just mm-hmm. be yeah. involved. Yeah. So yeah, maybe. So yeah, so yes is the answer then. Great. That's all I need to do. <laughs> So no, mate, listen, I'm going to have to wrap it up now, but listen, thank you very much for your time. It's great to finally actually get to speak to you. I can't believe that Masterpiece was yeah. 2017. That's so long ago. <laughs> Mad. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great that I've been around. Yeah. But yeah, okay, listen, perfect. Thank you very much. And listen, I look forward to seeing you at the EP launch party. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate thank you. it. Take care.